walking gets the feet moving, gets the blood moving, gets the mind moving. And that's a quote from Terry Gilman. In episode 17 of the Walking for Health and Fitness podcast, I discuss walking and working, how to plan time to walk during your workday. My guest in this podcast is Ermi Hosen. She's a busy career woman working in the financial sector. Ermi is a speaker, an advocate for women's empowerment. She's a YouTuber, a blogger, and a fitness enthusiast who uses walking to keep physically and emotionally fit. We discuss her book, Discovering Your Identity, a rebirth from interracial struggles, tells the story of a brown girl who grew up in Italy with Bengali parents who wanted her to be the perfect and obedient Bengali girl. Through reflections and confessions, the challenges of her childhood and how it shaped her life experiences. And keep listening as Ernie talks about how she breaks up her day, her work day, through walking segments. It's really interesting and it's a way to get in your walking time. Ermi also has two great pieces of advice for all young women to follow. So take notes and share these two nuggets of wisdom with the young women in your life. Then continue listening after the interview as I go over eight benefits of incorporating walking into your workday to increase your enjoyment of work. I'll talk about 12 practical steps you can take to increase your step count And then my walking inside of the week deals with interval training. Now, this episode is packed with some great information. So remember the opening quote, walking gets the feet moving, gets the blood moving, gets the mind moving. Let's begin. I'm I'm here with my guest, Ormi Hossain. And uh, well, I'll let her talk about herself. Ormi, tell our audience or my audience a little bit more about yourself. Yes, it'll be my pleasure, Frank. My name is Ormi and I'm located in Montreal. I am a full-time employee in the financial sector, but besides that, I'm also a speaker, so a published author, uh, an advocate for women's empowerment, a YouTuber and blogger, and uh, I'm someone who likes to invest a lot of my time in in myself, so I like like to do a lot of self-investing, but I also like to work out and keep myself in shape. So I'm very happy today to talk about my experience with working out, but especially walking. Oh, fantastic. That's why I did want to have you on the show because everything that you do, um, I would say that fitness probably could easily take a back seat to everything else. So how do you work fitness in to your day, which it looks very busy? Yes, I try to maintain at least, um, a, like I, I try to have a workout like four times per week. Okay. And usually I am someone who has to be in the office pretty much the whole week. And I try to use that moment to actually work out. And so usually what I do is that I block off for some time after work. So I am enrolled in some gym classes i do boxing once a week okay. i do a hit workout once a week and then for the rest of the of the days that i'm not in the office what i do is that i go to the gym near my house where i run so okay. i always make sure that i'm like working out four times a week but okay. one thing i incorporated lately is walking 10,000 steps a day because before the pandemic i used to work walk a lot mm-hmm. But then for some reason, I stopped and now I'm like, no, I need to go back to it. So now I actually incorporated 10,000 steps per day. So that 10,000 steps is a nice number. It's nearly five uh, miles a day. So when you do your 10,000 steps, is it like in one time, like I'm going out to walk 10,000 or is that throughout your day where you work in little times of like maybe lunchtime, getting out early to walk a little bit or before work? How does, how do you incorporate that when you do the steps? Yeah, it's actually divided in three parts. So basically, mm-hmm. I um, I take the metro to go to work. And what I do is that in the morning, I make sure that I get a good amount of steps. So I usually get off two stations before and I walk for 15 minutes mm-hmm. to my workplace. So that's okay. like right there. I, I've done like 2,000, 3,000 steps. Beautiful. And then I use, I use my lunch hour to actually walk. So right after I'm done eating, I take like a couple of minutes, I would take 40 minutes to walk. Okay. And then I check the, the, the status of my steps. <laughs> and then after work, I walk a little bit. Usually I don't have to walk too much after work. Uh, after work. So what I do is that 
I get off a station or two station before, like um, before um, reaching my home and I walk a little bit. Okay. And usually by five o'clock or 6 p.m., my steps are done. And so that's how I make sure that all my steps are done. And this, I do it on a weekly basis when I'm in the office. But when I'm, let's say, working from home, I actually wake up like an hour before my like start of the day. And I actually take 45 minutes to go outside and walk to get, get fresh air. I walk for 45 minutes. I listen to a podcast and then I go back home. And then during lunchtime, I walk again for 30 minutes and I come back home. So usually I try to like always spread it out to the 10,000 steps. It's never in one shot. Beautiful. Because I that's what I encourage my readers and listeners to do is a 15 minute walk in the morning before work. You can pull. I use, I don't take the train here, but it's, I park before work and then walk to it, you know, park away from the job. And that's what I encourage people to do and, you know, work it in. And it's not, once you start doing that, and as you see, it's, it's easy to work into it. So doing the walking, how is, how is your mindset when you're, when you're walking as opposed to days when you're not walking? I, I honestly feel very refreshed and energized because I feel like the fact that I, I took that minute just to be by myself and taking the walk by myself, like I feel much better. And I always use that, that, that time to learn. Like every anything that I do, I'm always trying to find a way to learn something. So I'm always listening to a podcast, whether okay. it's like 10 minutes, 15 minutes, or maybe like I'm catching up with a friend sending audios uh, through WhatsApp. But usually like I feel so much better because I feel like I need that time with myself and, and you know, get energized. So usually I feel very good. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, that's why I wanted to have you on the show because you're a busy career woman. <laughs> and a chapter of my book is going to be about how to work at a fit walking into a busy day and the busiest of people, which I'm sure which you are, and we'll get into that. Um, you can you can fit it in with just a little pre planning, and the benefits are so are, are enormous for your mindset and and your physical benefits. Now, before we continue, let me tell you about my fitness walking exercise program. You just heard Ermi discuss the role walking plays in her workday to keep her fit physically and emotionally. And besides walking, she does other exercises, including boxing, to stay fit and strong. But why join a gym when my fitness walking exercise program is a complete body workout you do while walking? You listen to my audio tracks, guide you through a complete 32-minute workout of my core four bodyweight exercises, all done during your daily walk. It's fast, efficient, and it works. The fitness walking exercise program is hosted on the Teachable Creators platform, so you have easy access from any device. There are five video lessons seven audio files to guide you through your workout. There's the fitness walking program. It's a 70-page booklet. There are 10 great bonus content downloads, including the audiobook versions of my first three walking books. Listen to them while you walk. There's a secure payment process, lifetime access to the program, and a risk-free 14-day money-back guarantee. So click the link in the show notes for the fitness walking exercise program and save $10 off with code Podcast 17 Ermi. I'll leave a link in the description. So uh, tell us your, tell us about your day and, and like what you do. I mean, you, you covered a lot of things in the beginning, uh, but what, what, what's your day like as a busy career woman? It's pretty busy. <laughs> it's very busy. I, well, I work full time in the financial sector, but, mm-hmm. uh, and that takes, let's say nine to five, like that's basically a nine to five job. But then after work, usually I dedicate, let's say four times, uh, I'm, four times per week to work out. So usually after work, let's say five to six or six to seven, I'm working out. Okay. And then right after work, I'm taking some time to actually take courses or write an article on my blog or record the YouTube uh, video on my on my YouTube channel. Um, and also I do a lot of volunteering work. So one of the things that I'm currently um, committed to is uh, being an advocate for women's empowerment. And I'm part of an organization called Women in Leadership, which is an organization based in Canada. 
and I'm part of the social media lead. So I'm basically the social media lead. And what I do is that I promote all the events happening in the organization. So usually I take a little bit of my evening uh, to work a little bit uh, on that, uh, maybe once a week. And then I'm also part of other things such as Toastmaster, where I get to practice my public speaking skills. I take, it's like each day there is something different that I'm doing. So it's each day I'm like working on, on a different project right. and that's how I spread out my, my whole week. Yeah. Right. Wow. So incredibly busy. Uh, and, and you take the time for fitness and I, I just step back. I think if you didn't have fitness, it would probably be very difficult to do all, to have the energy to do all that you do, you know, yeah. so the, the you know fitness what? aspect. Fit- yeah, fitness is so important, like for me, like if I'm not able, to, let's say to be at the gym, I actually take my time to run outside. And that's yeah. so important, like for my own own mental health and my okay. own mental <laughs> sanity, I would say, I do actually take that time because it's not just physical, it's also mental. And right. so like, I always make sure that you know what, I'm not able to go to the gym today, I'm going to try to do a little bit of workout at home, or maybe, you know, go out for 20 minutes take a quick run and then come back home. So that for me is so crucial. Like the, the world can end, but I have to make sure that I'm yeah. working out. The workout. <laughs> that ha- and it helps you for the, for the next day. I know yes. with me, it helps me for the next day. So fantastic. So uh, you're incredibly busy as a career woman. Uh, I'm a high school teacher. Uh, half my student population is female. What advice would you give my female students? And you, know, you deal with woman empowerment, but what, is, what exactly does that mean? And how can I um, give the advice to my students or actually play this video for them? You know what? I would have to um, advise one from the, I would say, educational point of view and one from like the fitness point of view. Beautiful. Um, Great. So one thing that I wish I had when I was growing up, especially being female myself, was having um, a mentor. And I feel like I somehow lacked that type of figure because I couldn't find anyone that will that look like me and I I I did not have I don't have an older sister so it was always for me hard to find a point of reference and now what I try to do in my free time through this different organization is mentor young talents the uh, girls who are in their 20s who want to work in finance or who want to build a career and so what I would suggest to f- any female students is that uh, is about the power of mentoring like if you want to get like if you want to have more confidence increase your self-esteem learn as much as possible always try to find the mentor so that would be my first uh, advice mm-hmm. and the second one from the fitness point of view is to actually start a course such as boxing or anything related to self-defense. And I feel like this is so underrated among female population because no one, like when we talk about self-defense, usually we see a lot of boys or guys or men trying to do, you know, boxing classes. And I do see it also in my own boxing classes. And I think it's because it's not encouraged enough uh, for women to try out this type of course. But I think it's so important, especially for us being a woman, to learn as much as possible about self-defense. And I think it's not just a physical workout, but it's a, a mental workout because it helps you to build with resilience. And I think every woman needs that. So those would be my two tips for any uh, female student that you have. Great. So men- mentorship, one, and two, self-defense, uh, physical fitness activity. Fantastic. Yes. Uh, uh, from the mentorship point of view, I, I mean, I have high school students, but where, where do you suggest a young woman look for a mentor and a role model? So I think anyone could be a mentor. Um, a teacher could be a mentor. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, a friend could be a mentor. And actually, I talk about this friendor, which is a combination of friend and mentor, because a lot of my friends have been a mentor to me. So even a friend could be a mentor. And I think also being part of communities because there are so many communities out there, especially those that are targeting young female or women where you can sign up as a mentee and you can be paired up with a mentor. And these are like 
free services that are being offered by different organizations. So depending on where you live, if you do a little bit of research, you might find communities or organizations that you can be part of. And this organization, they help you to like reach your goals. Uh, they help you to find a mentor and they target like different aspects. And usually there are so many like related about leadership. There are so many related about career. Like I can name you so many organizations that work towards this. So it's very easy for anyone to find a mentor. Oh, fantastic. Great. Uh, in fact, at some point, uh, if you could set, like send me one or two, I could add links to the uh, to the show notes and we'll, we'll do that. Uh, I think that'd be a great service to the audience. So let's, uh, let's talk about, let's talk about your book and your story, which I found <laughs> so interesting. Your book, Discovering Your Identity, A Rebirth from Interracial Struggle. So you sent me details of your story and your book. Um, you're Bengali. You were born in Italy, and now you live in Canada. So I'm assuming you speak three languages at least. And uh, no, actually, <laughs> oh. I speak uh, four point five. <laughs> oh, okay, yes. Okay, that's I said at least three. So, oh wow. So, um, really interesting. So, um, tell me about your story. Tell me about how the book came about, and also um, the book is your history. So, about your history. Yes, the book came um, after I read another book. Uh, basically, I was looking for a book um, of someone who went through something similar as me. And I came across this book about this girl who's uh, from South Asia, and she lives in Canada. And she talks a little bit about her experience being a South Asian woman. So I read her book and I felt very much inspired. Then I reached out to her and I was like, oh, how did you come out, come up on like writing this book? And she was like, yeah, it's very easy. You just have to like write it and so publish it. So then I was like, okay, maybe I can try to do something like that. And back then I was already being invited in different podcasts to talk about my, um, my struggle of being a tour culture kid. Okay. And all this time I felt not normal. Because I was like, I don't, I don't think it's normal that I'm not able to find a fit of myself. Because all my life, I was, I never felt like I was Bengali enough. I never felt I was Italian enough. People would question my uh, my ethnicity, no matter what kind of answer I would give them. Wow. Like if if I would say I'm Bengali, people would question it. If I would say I'm Italian, people would question it. So I was like, what is it that I'm supposed to be saying? And um, when I was growing up in Italy, basically, I was brought up in Italy. I was born there and my parents are from Bangladesh. And so a lot of the time I felt there was a little bit of conflict in terms of like cultures because they're very opposite to each other. And I never felt like I was Bengali enough. I never felt like I was um, Italian enough. And there was like an internal conflict in like finding my identity. And especially because people questioned it, I... It just made me really think and reflect a little bit more about who I am. Mm -hmm. And so after years of reflection, I came to conclude that I am Italian Bengali. And I just say it to anyone who asks me without, I don't want them to question it. Like I'm very firm about my answer. And I usually say I am Italian by, by birth and Bengali by blood because I think it just explains properly my identity. So I don't, I don't usually have to go too much with the history about yeah, my parents moved from Bangladesh, they went to Italy, and then I was born and stuff like that. And so it was, um, it, it's it's just, I felt like sharing that story, because I think there are a lot of a lot of people like me, uh, who go through this um, cultural identity struggle. And the more I talk about it, the more I realize that I have friends who also go through the same struggle, but they never spoke about it. So now we have conversation about it. And it just made them reflect a little bit a little bit about who they are and so I guess in a way I'm helping some friends and, and helping other people too and I feel like it's a common feeling that people can relate to oh for, for sure um I'm in I'm in a school now where we have a, a really diverse population and I'm sure a lot of the students probably have that same question in, in their mind they're in a country now I'm in an area that is very very racially diverse but even within this area, I mean, I have a son who is Korean and we're in an area that is very Caucasian. And I never looked at his point of view until he got a little older and realized, yeah, in a lot of his classes, he was the only uh, Korean in the, in the school. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there are so many, even in a diverse area of, I'm in North Jersey, 
that, um, you know, that's um, an issue. So what, again, I'll ask, what is your advice for um, a, a young person going through this? So it's totally normal to go through that because okay. uh, especially uh, when you're telling me about your son, I went through the same thing as well because mm -hmm. when I was growing up in Italy, I was the only person who aesthetically did not look Italian and it mm -hmm. always made me question it a little bit that you know I don't look like anything else around me and I think with time you come to learn who you are and it just it's it, you just have to be patient um, I think it's good to question it uh, but I think once you find the answer you will know who you are like you will know from deep inside what kind what what you want to embrace and I think by you know, talking to people, having conversations, being open about it, uh, talking to the right people, and also like exploring a little bit, trying different things, I think it will help you to find the right path. And so it's it's a normal feeling and you're not alone in this. So that's that's my message to anyone is that you belong to something and you belong to a group of people who go through the same thing and you're not abnormal. Fantastic. Um how long did it take you to write your book? And in writing the book, <laughs> in writing the book, did it, was it like opened your eyes to things, uh, uh, how you felt and was to, to get it out or like solidify like, oh, I'm putting these pieces together for this book, but I'm also putting it together for myself internally. Yeah. So for me, it was very, um, I had a lot of fun writing this book, uh, to right. be honest. And I felt like I was going back on a, like on a memory lane because I'm talking about my childhood. And so I had a lot of fun, but I also felt it was very therapeutic because it's sort of like journaling at the end, you know, because you're writing down and it just made me realize, you know, a lot of the things I went through. And like you said, yes, it did solidify a little bit of a lot of my thoughts. So for me, it was very, I think it was a beautiful journey because I feel like now I have something concrete that I can go back to and read also myself if I ever want to. Mm -hmm. So it's literally, a little bit like a journal, like a, a little diary that you have where you talk about yourself. And so for me, it was a beautiful, uh, it was a beautiful experience in general. Wonderful. Wonderful. I could see that the smile on your face. I love the quote. <laughs> this quote that you have on your uh, website is leave a sparkle everywhere I go. I love, well, I could see it's evident in, in talking to you. It's a real, <laughs> really you. great outlook to have. Uh, that's fantastic. Did you want to add anything else, uh, you know, cover anything else you'd like to uh, share with my audience? If I could, sh actually, you know, I'm going to share something. Uh, it's uh, to always be curious uh, because I think when you are curious about life, it will bring you far. Um, mm -hmm. I am naturally very curious I like to try different things I like to learn different things I like to try different recipes or workouts read different books I think it just helps you to diversify a little bit you as a person and I think it makes you versatile so I would say to everyone always be curious and have an open mind towards everything that's fantastic that's a that's a very <laughs> that's a terrific outlook uh on life um, your message is great for, for, uh, for young women. And as a teacher, um, I think you, you ever think about teaching? You know what? I, I'm, okay. Before, um, wanting to work in the finance sector, I always thought about teaching. Okay. Um, because, and this is the thing about me is that when I was graduating for uni from university, it was, it was so upsetting for me because I was like, I don't want to leave this. I love, I love being at school. I love learning and I love being a student. And I thought for a while, maybe I should become a professor and just teach and be around it by like young people. And I will feel young myself too. So I actually very much enjoy, enjoy teaching. Um, I actually teach like English and Italian, like, um, part-time for fun and I very much enjoy that because I get to meet people from all over the right. world I and I see it also as a learning opportunity because I have to like prepare lessons and so mm -hmm. when I'm preparing the lessons I'm like coming up with materials so I see it more like a, a win-win situation you know like they're learning I'm learning as well so it's 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 great I, I would love to be like an actual teacher at school well uh, you, 
it's yeah well you you have that i think that natural gift i think <laughs> you're probably terrific for you probably teach a language really well uh, i could see that your enthusiasm with it so, so <laughs> thank keep you. up that and you never know someday you might wind up in the classroom uh i i started teaching at 35 years old and it's something that has been a terrific fantastic experience so uh, yeah. You know, when one when day. when you get tired of the hustle and bustle of the financial <laughs> world, get yourself in the classroom. Uh, you know, this young people need someone like you, a good role model. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. How, you. how how is the financial markets right now? How how is is it crazy busy? Like, is that a cr intense job? Uh, is it an intense job? Uh, yes and no. It goes in periods, but now because we're like back to schools, so it it is a little bit busy. We do because I work in web management, so we do have uh, clients meetings, clients coming up, clients reviewing their portfolios. So it mm -hmm. it is a little bit busy, but it is a job that I very much enjoy. Good, good. Um, I even told my advisor eventually I will take your place. I don't know. We'll see. Like I just throw it out there. Uh, but there is also that side of me who, you know, like to be a teacher, but I would also like to have my own thing. So it's, it's like my mind just goes everywhere. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, and that's why I have like these side things that I do because I think they just bring me a little bit of more, you know, fulfillment. Like maybe I wasn't a teacher, but I still teach, you know, yeah. part time. From the financial side, uh, I'm sure you are a teacher because many, I mean, many people don't know much about finance. So I'm sure. I'm sure in that realm, you're also a terrific teacher. Uh, we do have to educate our clients. That's for, for sure. Um, because, you know, maybe their kids need to be, need to have some financial literacy classes. Uh, I've been in this position for a year and I have been already open to my managers that, you know what, maybe we can organize some workshop or something like that yeah, and yeah, teach yeah. them. Uh, yeah, I, I'm very like, I do have this initiate initiative spirit where I do like to, you know, come up with different ideas and anything that allows me to be there out there, anything that allows me to use my public speaking skills, communication skills, my, you know, share my knowledge. I'm always like always up for those things. Right. So, yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, you must be very good at it. I hope so. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's good. Well, this has been Umi Hosen. Her book, Discovering Your Identity, A Rebirth from Interracial Struggle, is available on Amazon. Uh, Umi is a really a, a fitness enthusiast because it helps her with her busy life. So uh, anything else you wanted to add with, that, that you'd like to add to that? I'm, I'm very happy that uh, I got interviewed by a teacher. I don't think I ever got interviewed by a teacher, and I think teachers all my life have been a role model. I always looked up at my teacher as God because there's so much wisdom and knowledge they can share. So I'm very happy that I got the chance to talk to you today. Oh, well, th thank you very much. I appreciate <laughs> that. So picking up from the interview, let me give you a benefits of walking that can significantly increase your enjoyment of working by improving your physical and mental well-being, which in turn positively impacts your attitude and engagement in your tasks at work. So here's how walking can contribute to your enjoyment of work. Number one is stress reduction. Now walking is a natural stress reliever. It helps reduce cortisol levels, the stress hormone, and triggers the release of endorphins, which are natural mood elevators. Lower stress levels can make you feel more relaxed and happier at work. Number two, enhance mental clarity. A short walk can clear your mind and improve your ability to concentrate. When you return to your desk, you may find it easier to focus on task and problem solving, leading to a more enjoyable and productive work experience. Number three, increase creativity. Walking can stimulate creative thinking. Many people find that taking a break and walking outdoors or in a new environment can spark fresh ideas and innovative solutions to work-related challenges, making work more engaging and exciting. Number four, improved physical well-being. Regular walking can improve your overall health and fitness. When you feel physically well, you're more likely to enjoy your work because you're not distracted by discomfort or health concerns. Number five, better work-life balance. Incorporating walking into your workday can help you achieve a healthier work-life balance. It serves as a reminder 
to take breaks, step away from your desk and recharge, preventing burnout and making work feel less overwhelming. Number six, increase social interaction. If you choose to walk with colleagues or friends during breaks, it provides an opportunity for social interaction. Building positive relationships with coworkers can make your work environment more enjoyable and supportive. Number seven, enhanced job satisfaction. When you experience less stress, improved focus, and creative breakthroughs, you're likely to derive greater satisfaction from your work. You may find your tasks more engaging and meaningful. And number eight, boost motivation. Feeling more energized and less stressed can boost your motivation and enthusiasm for your job. You may be more inclined to take on challenges and seek out new opportunities for growth and development. Now, incorporating walking into your work routine, whether through short breaks, walking meetings, or regular walks before or after work, can have a profound impact on your overall enjoyment of work. It contributes to a healthier, more balanced, and positive work experience, which can lead to increased job satisfaction and overall happiness in your professional life. Adding more walking steps to your workday is an excellent way to promote physical activity and break up long periods of sitting. Here are 12 practical tips to help you increase your daily step count while at work. Number one, take short walk breaks. Set a timer to remind yourself to take short breaks every hour. Even a five to 10 minute walk around the office or outside can make a difference. Number two, use a standing desk or treadmill desk. I'm standing at my desk right now while I do this podcast. If possible, consider using a standing desk or treadmill desk. These allow you to work while standing or walking slowly, increasing your step count throughout the day. Number three, opt for walking meetings. Instead of sitting in a conference room, suggest walking meetings with colleagues. This not only increases your step count, but can also lead to a more creative and productive discussions. Number four, choose the scenic route. When going to the restroom, getting water, or heading to a colleague's desk, take a route longer to accumulate more steps. Number five, use stairs instead of the elevators. Whenever possible, take the stairs instead of the elevator. This is a simple way to incorporate more physical activity into your work routine. Number six, park further away. If you drive to work, park your car further away from the office entrance. This forces you to walk a bit more when you arrive and when you leave, or you can do as Ormi suggested, she gets uh, off the train a few stops before her job so that she gets her walk in before she even gets to the office. Great idea. She does the same thing on the way home. Number seven, walk or bike to work. If your workplace is within reasonable distance, consider walking or biking to work. Number eight, set step goals. Use a fitness tracker or a smartphone app to set daily step goals. These devices can provide motivation by showing your progress and encouraging you to reach your target. Number nine, take the stairs for phone calls. Now, if you have a phone call or virtual meeting, consider walking around while you talk. A wireless headset can make it easier. Number 10, lunchtime walks. Use your lunch break to take a longer walk. Invite colleagues to join you for a social aspect and to make it more enjoyable. Number 11, get up during screen breaks. If you have a job that involves long hours in front of a computer, make it a habit to stand up and walk around for a few minutes during these screen breaks. And number 12, join a walking club or do a walking challenge with friends. Join a walking club. I have a Facebook group called Your First Walking Group. Check that out. I'll leave a link in the show notes. Also, compete with friends or colleagues. Can make it more challenging. Set a step challenge and see how you do competing with your colleagues and friends at work. Remember that small changes can add up over time. Gradually incorporating these habits into your workday can help you increase your step count and promote a healthier, more active lifestyle while working. And this last section from my walking logbook journal, it's add interval training to your uh, fitness routine. Research shows that interval training, that's workouts with which you alternate periods of high intensity exercise with low intensity recovery periods, increases your fitness and burns more calories over a short period of time then steady state carbo, or in plain language, just doing the same thing for your whole workout. For example, speed up your walking pace for a minute or two every five minutes, or alternate one fast minute with two slower minutes. An easy way to to add interval training while walking is to pick a point up ahead, such as a parked car or utility pole. Then quicken your pace until you reach it. Slow down to recover, then pick another point in the distance and pick up the pace again. 
Repeat this several times during your walk. So again, I mentioned my fitness walking exercise program and how this interval training workout will help you burn more body fat in the least amount of time. Learn more by going to the Walking for Health and Fitness website or click the links below. Use the discount code podcast 17 ermy and save $10. Now you can download the first three insights and the logbook pages of the Walking Logbook Journal and see how tracking your miles and writing out your best thoughts will keep you motivated to walk more. The link will be in the show notes. Now your next step, plan your workday to include opportunities to add to your step count. Every little increase in the number of steps you take will help improve your overall physical and emotional health and fitness. This is Frank. Thank you for listening and walk on. Hey, this is Frank again for Walking for Health and Fitness. Check out the other videos that I have playing all around me here. Uh, Again, I've got some great content to get you on your way to better health and fitness through walking.